What's going on? Move the mouse here back in the town of Rockdale, and I had to bring up my menu and double check the name there. This is episode two of my Let's Play City Skyline series. So I have another series on the channel that goes over kind of starting your town from the ground up and, and building it bit by bit. But we talk about some of the milestones and I skip over some stuff along the way. And I did get a number of requests to kind of see more of the step by step stuff. So that series, that town, really, there's some big projects that I have to undertake. And, and they're kind of huge at this point because I really kind of stamped parts of the town out and, and they weren't cohesive and they didn't really connect together correctly. And I wasn't planning for future expansion. So some of that stuff is just really boring to watch. In my opinion, I so what I wanted to do was kind of do more of the step by step in this series where we're kind of trying to plan things out a little bit better. And we started that in the last episode with the avenue system that we kind of put into place here. So we've got the ramps. Let me hide the fact that we you know, need more workers and, and shoppers. We built our little 45 off the highway, but then we started right away with these six lane roads kind of coming around the uh, the various neighborhoods. So this setup that I have here, let me go directly overhead. This nine block setup is a residential neighborhood, if you will. And then this is another neighborhood. This will be another neighborhood once we do one more block there the south and so will this and the the thinking behind this and i'm going to change this before i forget editing the last video this drove me crazy so if anybody noticed this good on you but this is supposed to be the big avenue running through here okay there we go let people move back in while we uh while we talk about this but the the thing about this is we're trying to minimize any of the intersections with the avenues so if we look at kind of this direction, the north to south direction. Our intersections are every 20 blocks, uh, 20 units, I'm sorry, not 20 blocks, but that keeps things nice and far apart. If we ran these streets up into this avenue, then we'd be a little too close together. There'd be too much traffic, especially on that main street, which you can see is already getting clogged with trucks from the industrial area. That's one of the things actually we're gonna work on Today, I think it's most important for us to decide on the tile and um, get our next part of the town done. Maybe we'll just finish this one residential block system over here, um, and then we'll do the, the industrial portion. But it's all about minimizing intersections. All this is, is residential traffic, so the traffic in this individual neighborhood shouldn't be too bad. The, the two-lane streets aren't the fastest paths for the AI, so they should prefer the six lane roads outside of the neighborhood unless they actually live in that neighborhood. So let's finish this one more block system. It looks like I carved out enough space with the landscaping tool in the last episode. So we will bring out our avenue in the middle here. We'll bring it out one more block. We'll box this off. And we'll just finish this one little piece of uh, our neighborhood system. And then it's on to build, hopefully, a successful industrial area right from the ground up. What I did in my uh, tutorial series was just kind of build a quick industrial area to meet the need. And then I actually have a, a really high-functioning industrial area there that I haven't highlighted yet. Um, so I will, at some point maybe do a video focus just entirely on that, but we'll start to build up that successful network right here in today's episode of Rockdale. Let's play City Skyline. So we'll stamp all that out, give people some residential zoning, and then we're gonna have to water it, and then we should be good down here for a little while. Let's we'll continue off our existing grid here. You probably heard me say it before if you've been following the series, but $440 worth of pipe creates that perfect little bit of overlap. Which is nice. And now we need to think industry. So there's two things that we need to do. One is we need to get a new tile for that industry. And the one that I'm thinking is to the north. I don't want to really separate things with the highway, create a bit of a buffer zone. So we need that area first. Let's do that. The other thing that we need, or the other thing at least that we want to do, 
because again, I want to plan for future expansion, is I want to do its own exit on the highway. So I want to build it kind of up this way. Now let's see if we can delete just the right amount of highway. So that truck to that truck, basically. Hopefully we can sneak it right in here. One, with having to build as little highway as possible. Two, letting us snap to the highway would be awesome, but I know this game. It's not going to let me do that. It's going to get all wonky here. It always wants to go a little bit further. It never wants to line up. It always wants to go a little bit beyond. This is one of the most annoying things on console. You can't really rotate things finely, so we've got to kind of just concede and and put a little bit of a bend in our highway, but that is not the end of the world. We can deal. Especially since we're probably going to curve that, that highway a bit. So, let's do that. We'll just drop it in. The other thing I did is I, I raised it here so that we don't have to, you know, have these funky up and downs in the highway. We'll get it as close as we can. It's not going to let me get to the angle that I want, unfortunately. I wonder if oh, we'll just do it. I was gonna start bringing road network and try and snap down there, but but it's it's just not gonna happen. We will deal with it. It's not too bad. It's it's pretty good. For right now, we're just gonna snap it together. I may at some point down the road kind of maybe curve it a little bit, just just ever so slightly coming off the the bridge there. But let's just connect this up for now. It's not bad when you look at it from far away. Mm, it bothers me more actually when I look at it from far away. But we'll we'll deal with it for now. It's it's a small concession to make to to drop in this little industrial area for us. Now, I I kind of want to keep things on this same grid. But at the same time, it it should be isolated enough that maybe we get off of you know, the system that, that this is all gridded, even if it's just a, a little bit tilted from the rest of it. You know what? We, we're just going to do it. So what we want to do is have a, a really effective on and off ramp that's just for our industry. So that was step number one was, you know, kind of giving it its own on and off ramp. Step number two is kind of keeping it away from other on and off ramps. So this is going to be for getting into our town west of the river. And we'll do one, maybe another residential areas we need to expand over there there's already that interchange over there so maybe we build off of that there's some ideas that i have maybe some left hand exits where we split the highway a little bit and do left hand exits and alternate that way traffic doesn't all line up in the right exit here and if there's a big backup the right exit here if we split the highway a bit and do some left hand exits you know, the, the traffic at the next exit would be lining up on the left-hand side. So if there is a backup, it won't be affecting the people getting off, say, on the right-hand side for the industry here. But we will we'll figure that out as we go. Let's do our exit here. But I think what I want to do is it's coming from three lanes of highway. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump it down to a two-lane road rather than just a traditional highway off-ramp. So 12 units gives us the smoothest slope. And then let's come out eight more to make it 10. So that'll be a 20. It's it's the same thing that we did coming off the highway over there. It's just part of it is sloped. So it's going to take the three lanes down to two. In the future, we will probably expand it, but that is going to get really expensive. If we're going to do this in all big lanes. So let's do the same thing over here. Should be 12 units. We'll bring it out eight more. So on and off ramp. Great. Where do we go from here though? So this is gonna be a relatively small industrial zone, I think, in comparison to the last one I built, but that's okay because you'll see in a minute. Let me um 
gonna let me it's not gonna let me snap exactly where I want to unfortunately so oh you know what let's see if we connect these two with a brief road just for a moment this won't actually be connected in the final setup I probably did a lot more road than I needed to there I think it'll let me build straight off of that now so these are all one ways that we're gonna do here basically when you come off the highway and you go to industrial we want to direct you down these one-way roads This is kind of for getting into our industry. Let's see how close do we want to get. I could do that, but I'd be more comfortable with that in terms of the pollution. Hmm. Because our water intake's right down there. I don't want the pollution spilling over into the water. So let's just do that for now. We could always do this. So, okay, we could do things a little bit differently here. So we could do these really long industrial neighborhoods. And I'm just gonna do maybe two blocks, three blocks for now, just to kind of show you the structure that I'm thinking, and then we can keep expanding it. Do three for now. Oh! <laughs> ah, sometimes this is, you know, the kind of stuff that I would normally edit out, but in the Let's Play, we've got real world, fake world problems. So uh, I wasn't playing that whole time, so we weren't earning money, and I used all that money that we had in the bank on that interchange. So let's earn some money so we can finish this road network. Hopefully we'll get to that next... Population milestone at 5,500, 5,500, 5,500. We should get there pretty quick. That won't be too bad. So we'll have some money to mess around with in the bank. But right now, this industrial area is going to be pretty simple. It's about getting traffic to and from the highway if we fix our directions. We fix both of our directions on our off ramp. Jeez. Okay. Um, so, to and from the highway, very simple, right? We've got that problem solved. We've got other problems happening. So, let's fix those very quickly. Why? Why was sewage an issue? Are we having power problems? Let's look at our power. We are having power problems. So, so that is unfortunate. Um, try to think. We could either... You know, we're going to dezone this anyways. So let's just put our power plant next to um, our other power plant. As soon as we have enough money, we'll plunk that in because that is a problem that we're going to have and we need to deal with right away. Little things that, again, in the other series, uh, I would just edit out. In this series, though, we're we're just doing things step by step, so you get to see all the problems kind of as they happen. So we'll drop that in there. We'll solve our pro our power problems for a little while, but we've got that growing and growing uh, industry demand that we've got to meet. So we're gonna have to get pipes over here. We're gonna have to get electricity over here, but that's not too bad because we can just come over from the other side of the highway. Um. But I want to start dezoning some of that industry and, and hopefully let some of this pollution, at least south of the highway, start to clean up. Um, but the idea behind this is just to keep things totally flowing. So trucks are going to come in. They're going to go down these streets, go to the industry, and then get out of town on the highway. Um, let's zone that up. Let's have some people start moving in. But we want to do a couple things. Actually, you know what? I should have left that cross street because here's the thing. We're not, I shouldn't say I should have left it. I should have upgraded it to also to a one way. Because what we want is. Let me build this where I want to. Okay. So, okay, we've got to get water over here. Let's do that. Let's solve the water and electricity problem live on the fly without pausing because we need to make some money. 
We'll come over the highway for now. We have to come up. One enough? One is enough, good. So let's get our electricity as close as we can to this for now. We'll get water over here next. We'll bring it from the closest pipe that we can. Which is right there for now. Oh, we haven't dropped in a cemetery yet. Let's do that. Find a nice spot. See if this... That'll cover that neighborhood actually really nicely. And this is going to be very central. At least east to west of the town. And, and it gives us something we can kind of plop down here. On this southern road as a city service. So that's a good spot. Uh, let me make sure I didn't zone on either side of that road. On, on the south side of that road, I should say. I didn't. Okay, so we can... This will leave this open. We can put in like... You know, hospital, or I should say med clinic. We don't need hospital coverage. Another school. We can solve all those problems. So first problem we're going to have up here is we are going to have a worker problem because we have increasing residential demand. And it's a bit far away for people to drive to. So that, that will be one of the first things we kind of connect with the metro. As people start to move in, hopefully on this side of the block, I will disconnect those power lines. But the other thing that we need over here is we need fire and police coverage. So that's what we can use this little D-zone portion of the road for. The closer we put it to the end, the better, but let's do this. Police first on the very end of the block because if we did it the other way around, the fire department wouldn't be able to put out a fire at the police station because they'd have to drive all the way around that block and they might not get back there in time. If we have crime at the fire station, that I can deal with. But if we have service buildings burning down, that's not good. So actually that right there, that building that just moved in next to the police station should let us now disconnect this power line, which lets that zoning free up and we don't want to zone there because we don't want anybody on that one way right we don't want trucks coming back into this loop so they're once they hit this part of the loop they're done they're not they're not going anywhere and let's zone this but let's dezone that very last lane just because we don't want anybody moving in on this road Right? We don't want any businesses facing this direction. We want them all facing... And actually... That looks like a business that is facing that way, because there's no way other way to get to it, right? So let's dezone that as well, too. We'll see if people move out. So a couple businesses did move out, because I don't want people... I don't want the trucks stopping on this road. I want them stopping on the, the longer cross streets. We're already getting some abandoned buildings. Um, not because the zone is ineffective, but because there's no easy way to get here and they need workers and they're just going out of business because they can't they can't support their businesses with no workers. So as soon as we can, we will drop in the metro, but I believe that is not until 8,500. So that, we're still a ways off from that. So this this may not be the most effective industrial zone, but at least it meets the need. What we do not have right now. And this is part of our problem, is enough residents. So, two things I can do here. I can purchase a tile. And I think we'll do that so that I can round out my last residential piece over here. Um, but then I want to start doing more high density over here. But again, we don't unlock high density for a little while. Do we already have another power problem? Man, these, these coal power plants suck. <laughs> wow. I love it when you get to nuclear because you can just solve so much of your, your power capacity problem for a while. And it's not long after that, usually, um, if you've unlocked 
the um, capabilities for the, the unique buildings to get to the monuments. You can get the monuments pretty soon after you get to nuclear. Uh, I just uploaded the monument guide in the channel. So it's been updated for 2018, covers all of the DLC that's available in consoles today. It doesn't do the green cities or park life monuments, but we'll we'll get there eventually. Uh, but if you're wondering, you know, how to build some of the monuments, check that one out on the channel. So let's do one more neighborhood and meet that ever growing residential demand. And we'll do one more of our little blocky neighborhoods here. It should be three. We'll come up to there we'll connect that and we're gonna want to landscape this so I'm just gonna get that out of the way while we've got some money in the bank now one of the things that we're gonna have to do is we are gonna have to see where to put this soil so maybe we can start raising that up slowly over there a little plateau because we're gonna run out of room to pick up soil here pretty soon these landscaping tools get so, so expensive. I'd like to keep somewhat of a natural line, but we've got to cut into this quite a bit if we're gonna, we gotta put some soil down. So let's do that. Let's raise it up very slowly around itself. Wow, that was not very slowly. Let me, let me reduce the strength a little bit here maybe. Not enough money. Not enough money to dump dirt on the ground. Thanks, City Skylines. Um, let's see what else we have for problems. It looks like we need more water pumping. And of course, that costs us money. This is one of the things I like about the presentation of some of the other series that I do. If you don't want to see stuff step by step, I've, you know, I've got some tutorial videos on how to do a lot of what we're doing and, and we don't have to see these repetitive problems happening but um hopefully some of you enjoy the series if it if the step-by-step -step ends up being not as exciting um let me know but uh but i'm i i love building new cities i love i love kind of this this struggle i just don't know if it makes for the most entertaining content so let me know what you think in the comments down below if you want to see more of this step-by-step -step dealing with the problems as we go, kind of watching the city grow bit by bit. Um, I mean, these are probably all the same problems that you run into during your plays, but you don't see it as much in the, um, the edited videos that I do that just kind of want to cover and focus on specific topics. Um, it looks like I'm having a much easier time, I think, in those than I am in some cases, but I, I struggle with all the same things. You know, we're having garbage problems, having abandoned buildings happen all, all over the city. We've really got to meet that residential demand. So let's see, were we able to dump enough soil at least to fix this? Because if we were, that's, that's good. Not. I think we can get that in there without having to Curve that road too much. That looks like that should be okay. Tuck that back just a little bit to be sure. So, six lane roads, they get really expensive, but they also provide a ton of throughput and it's gonna solve all of our traffic needs for quite a while, hopefully, because this is gonna be our only on and off ramp but right now, all the way over to the river until I maybe build some kind of bypass highway that will maybe split our town north to south, maybe somewhere south of this line that we're on right here. Um, we've got to make do with that one exit for now because I don't want to have too many exits off the highway because um, you don't want them too close and I have them kind of going opposite directions, but you can still have the traffic kind of running up against itself if the industrial exit gets really backed up, um, or if this one is just way too overloaded once we have all the residents moving in towards the river. So we wanna try and keep those exits as spaced out as possible. And we'll see what we can do there to keep the traffic flowing as best as we can. Come on, there we go. Just connect those up. We'll zone off our 
commercial first with just the selection tool here because I want commercial buildings on Main Street. I only want the residents in the neighborhoods behind it though. I don't want the residents actually moving into Main Street. I want this to be all businesses up here. Businesses that are going out of business, unfortunately. So uh, we can stamp out our residential on the rest of those blocks. And we will have to get probably water coverage over here. Oh, we did we did pretty good coverage over here. So let's just extend that out a little bit. We're seeing a little bit redundant coverage there, but let's just do what we need to for now. Since we're in the water tool and we're gonna need it in about two minutes, let's just finish this neighborhood as well. And we don't have to worry about it. Garbage, garbage. You gonna complain about the garbage? Maybe I will bulldoze your house and put a dump there. That way other people stop complaining. Okay, let's do this. Goodbye. Goodbye. Uh, hopefully that power plant doesn't burn down. I just removed the police's ability to get there, but I mean, this is half of my garbage problem right here right now, and we want to move the industry out of here anyways, so... Problem solved. <laughs> we don't have any garbage collection up here. Uh, let's do that. Because this is a, a high polluting thing, but um, we're not really concerned about it polluting the polluted area. Down here, though, that is more of a concern. We'll just do a second dump up here for now. It's not ideal. But that area is already polluted, so that should give us a little bit of extra coverage. Hopefully we'll solve some of our garbage problems down here. And let's do that last residential neighborhood because we still had a lot of demand. We had a higher demand for residential, but now we've got a lot of demand for industrial because we deleted that whole block. Um... So we'll get to that next, but let me finish up this residential area real quick. Because one of the most important things, we need that population to keep increasing so that we can keep bringing people in and hitting those milestones. So even though there's very little residential demand, I want to make sure we're meeting it so we can go focus on some of those other projects. That should be good. That should be covered by water. Before we run out of power again, let's keep stamping out some industrial neighborhoods. And and actually, let me bring this up for a minute. So you can see that even in an industrial area this small, traffic's flowing really well because it's all going one direction. Everything comes off the highway. It goes right. It goes down the street it wants to go to. Once it's done with that business, either delivering or picking up goods to deliver somewhere else, um, then it goes back onto the highway. Now, at some point, this will get overloaded and it will start to back up. And we need to keep an eye on that. We, we can only support so much off of a single exit if we're if we're just throwing tons and tons of traffic. I'll, um, I am gonna do another video on it, but maybe I'll just insert a clip right here to show you kind of the overhead of the industrial zone that I've got in my, my other city. Because it's basically this layout just with a kind of a mirrored approach. So it's like these big avenues and, and it's got this stamped kind of on either side of a cargo train station. Cargo train station right in the middle. And it moves an absolute ton of traffic through it. But so much so that the, the highway, the, the highway T intersection can't support it. Um, and it just gets clogged and it backs up onto the highway. So I'm working on a way to fix that. But I think honestly, really the only thing to do the easiest thing to do is just not throw more traffic than one of these T interchanges can support. Spread it around your map a little bit. I wanted to have it all kind of in one spot. Keep all the pollution in, in that one little area. But now in that world that I have the Eden Project unlocked, 
I, I don't need to worry about the pollution as much because it really doesn't get far past the... I forgot to dezone those side streets again. Can have businesses moving out like crazy. We'll answer your water problem in a moment. We've just dezoned that street. Why do we have some zones over here that aren't covered, though? So let's paint that in. Really tiny business can move in there if it wants to. And those won't... And I see those don't matter because they're part of that side street zone. Okay. 5,500. Excellent. So, decorative roads, bigger police, hospital, and fire stations. Do we have the high school here too, or is that the next one? Or we already got the high school, what am I saying? Right? Did we already get the high school and I forgot to drop it in? Yeah, probably. No high school coverage yet. Let's do that. We just got a little influx of money. Again, this sort of central street down here. This could be a good spot for some, some school coverage. I think we can get by with the, the med clinic and the fire station for now. The smaller versions of those buildings. Just to cover this neighborhood. Save us a little bit of money. So there is another elementary. Let's see where our police... Because that would just be overkill right now, the headquarters. That covers everything nicely. It's not cheap providing all these city services. And we're going to need to save some money for, looks like, another power plant. <laughs> um, this, this is kind of an, an odd spot in any city where you need to have the money cranking in because as you grow you just you sort of hit against all these different obstacles at the same time we have unlocked the the power plant the oil power plant now though if we can fit it here it's, it's so much more expensive but it it solves a lot more of our problem uh power problem at once so let's do that somehow this is an industry right here this one little tile of a blinking fuel barrel that kind of looks like a grenade um i'm not sure how that's a business but i wish you great success let's see where we're at so we have over here at our power plant uh <laughs> it actually can't get power that's part of our power problem because it is not operating because it doesn't have access to coal which i didn't think when i cut off the uh highway from that so you can see the other buildings there are having garbage police fire problems no more problems for you there we go solved it fixed it so we've got a bunch of residential demand coming up we've got commercial demand creeping up again so i think what we're going to do you're going to get a cold delivery very soon. Now that you're on the road network, I would like you to please stop complaining. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to start to think about how to expand out this way a little bit. And I, I might do some of these similar neighborhoods. But what we're going to do here, I'm going to try and space things out a little bit. We're going to have a, a kind of wider commercial block with some dead space in the middle so we can run a train up through that and maybe it, eventually it will go around this part of the town up through here it can stop at industry it can go across the river to the next half so we can kind of split some things off but i want to really plan for um, some of that expansion where i really cram stuff in on the last map um, i want to sure cram stuff in but also then give some area for mass transit to kind of fit in between those neighborhoods Maybe throw some parks, plan for some you know bigger monuments, unique buildings down the road. 
but uh, but that is a a good spot to break for now. Uh, we've hit that milestone. The next big one is going to be at 8,500, and that's where we can start putting in the metros, and that is going to help some of our our problems up here where people aren't willing to travel. Metro is not going to solve the fact that I forgot to water this block, though. So let's fix that. A lot of, a lot of people moved out there. Um, I'm sorry if that was water service related and not lack of worker related. So we will uh, pick up on the next one and try and find. Man. Problems after problems. So we'll try and uh, find a spot for. Uh, again, a, a large commercial block here, and then we'll have some high density residential over here that will unlock soon enough. I'd really like to try and get by with maybe we'll do some neighborhoods off this way if we can afford that tile. Can I buy tiles yet? I can't. So we can't even buy that tile until we get the metro. So we'll we'll spin some other neighborhoods. Maybe over here we'll get away from that grid system and do you know, a little neighborhood that kind of fits in this nook, which you just can barely see now because it just turned nighttime as I was talking about it. We've got a lot of stuff to talk about in the next episode. Some fun stuff, commercial expansion, making room for a highway, huge residential demand that we're going to have to address. So we'll get to all that in the next one. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you like this series, let me know. Um, if you're a fan of my other city's skylines and it, and it turns out that it is too much, just kind of seeing it all built bit by bit if it doesn't interest you let me know in the comments down below if it does interest you that's good too though let me know and i will continue on with the series but i love building cities from the ground up i, I love that initial challenge and, and some of these problems that you run into i just don't know if it makes for the most entertaining content so if you enjoyed it please hit that like button it does help the channel a lot if you didn't hit the dislike button but let me know why in the comments because a, a random dislike without uh, any feedback doesn't really tell me what you want to see more of or what you were hoping to see when you came to this video of course if you dislike the video you probably didn't make it this far but thanks for staying tuned if you're new here subscribe for more city skylines and other great game videos hit that bell to get notifications because it is very easy for a small channel like mine to get lost in the shuffle and just disappear from your feed unfortunately thanks to the youtube algorithm sometimes but until the next one when we resume our let's play on the town of Rockdale, this is Move the Mouse, signing off.